everyone in the previous lecture we had been discussing the hemos displacement potential stemming basically from the hemos representation theorem in this lecture we are going to discuss another displacement potential and we would like to see the connections with the hemos displacement potential or at least some uh, some uh, some relationships as regards the solution so uh, more commonly this is referred to as the lamis strain potential instead of the lamis displacement potential uh, we'll just refer to it as, as the lamis potential okay so uh, and please note that this lamis uh, it is the same scientist after whom the lamis parameters are named uh, in the linear elastic uh, isotropic material behavior so the lambda and the g which we keep on using to connect the stresses with the strains for a linear elastic isotropic material behavior those two material parameters those those lamis parameters it is the same lamis here all right so what lamis said was that the displacement vector can be represented in this particular form so what i'll do is because i have already utilized this particular symbol pi in the hemos uh, displacement potential i will slightly change it and represent it by this phi okay uh, so if you are typesetting it uh, some of you already know this this is actually the phi uh, or the phi as some people call it and the other one which i had just written this one that is uh, referred to at least in latex as var phi okay so that's just a side talk uh, so what do we do with this thing so first of all you note that uh, if you just discount this coefficient of 1 by 2 g then uh, this form of the displacement vector being represented as a gradient of a scalar potential it is very much reminiscent of what we did back in our kinematics chapter to represent the irrotational dis, uh, of an irrotational displacement field and you can check that yourself if you just take the curl of the displacement vector that is equal to uh, this 1 by 2 g factor is there of course but it is just the curl of this thing and this is identically zero okay so this is identically true that means that these lamis uh, uh, potential okay so the implication is that the lamis potential is strictly limited to a rotational displacement fields this is very very important to note okay so what is the implication of of considering such a displacement potential so just like as as we had done for the hemos displacement potential we utilize the displacement vector uh in the in the navier lamis equation uh, so so just to recall the navier lamis equation is basically uh we start with this form of the stress equilibrium equation and from this by substituting the expressions for the stresses in terms of the strains and then subsequently those strains in terms of the displacement we end up with this particular form this particular form of the equation which we had done which we had mentioned in our previous lecture on the hemos displacement potential also uh, so this is the the navier lamis equation 
Okay, so again, you come across the name Lamy. So his name occurs again and again uh, all throughout our studies of elasticity. All right. So we had also seen in the previous lecture that if we use a particular vector identity, then we end up with another form of this equation, which is lambda plus twice g grad div of u minus g curl of the curl of u. Okay, so these two statements are perfectly equivalent. Now, what we intend to do here is to specialize to the to the to our current situation. Okay, so whatever we have written, these three steps, these are uh, these are applicable uh, for any general systems as long as we are considering linear elastic isotropic material behavior. When we consider this particular form of the displacement potential, then you immediately note that this curl of u that is zero. For our current situation, this is equal to zero. And this divergence of u, okay, so you can uh, immediately write here the divergence of u that is simply 1 by twice g the Laplacian of phi, as easy as that. So, what we end up with is this lambda plus twice g the grad of the Laplacian of phi, the grad of the Laplacian of phi, this is 0 plus rho b vector is equal to 0. All right. Now, again, we are ending up with a, with a, with a kind of situation uh, where the body forces are kind of bothering us. Because if you look back at what we had discussed during the Hemholtz displacement potential, there also, we had ended up with an equation involving uh, certain uh, uh, forms uh, involving the Laplacians and, uh, and whatnot of the, of the phi and the omega. But it was due to the presence of the body forces that we couldn't say much. It was only when we set the body forces to be equal to zero that we were able to proceed and find out uh, to more convenient forms of the, of the equation. Okay, so what I'm referring to here, if we just look back a little bit, so this is what I'm saying. This is exactly what I'm saying here. So we had considered the rho b vector to be equal to zero. So this is referring back to the Hemo's displacement potential framework. And subsequently, as a consequence of setting the rho b vector equal to zero, we had ended up with these two equations, this hash hash one and the hash hash two equations, which are basically the biharmonics of the two uh, potentials. This was the scalar potential and this was the vector potential within the context of the Hemo's displacement potential. Now, back in, uh, back in our Lamis potential, again, we can say something uh, useful, something immediately useful, only when we set this rho b vector to be equal to zero. So that's what we'll do to so consider. Rho b vector to be equal to zero. Therefore, what we obtain is, well, you can see immediately that this is what we obtain. We have removed this lambda plus twice g. Okay. Now, what is the implication of this? The grad of the Laplacian of phi. First of all, you note that the Laplacian of phi, this phi itself being a scalar quantity, and the Laplacian operator also being scalar, this entire entity within the bracket that is a scalar entity, that's scalar. But that is being operated by this gradient operator, and the gradient operator is vectorial in nature. So what we are basically going to obtain, for, a, for instance, if we specialize to a rectangular Cartesian coordinate system, okay, so this is true for any, this particular form of the equation, this is true for any coordinate system we may choose, but uh, just to illustrate, in a rectangular Cartesian coordinate system,
we are going to end up with these three equations. This is for the x component. This is for the y component. Sorry about this symbol. To correct that. And of course, the z component. Now, from this, what we'll obtain is that this entity del square phi that is going to be just a function of y and z because here the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to 0 and if we substitute this particular form the f y z here what we obtain is the del del y of f of y comma z is equal to 0 which basically implies that this function which we thought to be actually a function of both y and z turns out that this is nothing but a pure function of z that is the that is the direct consequence of the statement that the del del y of f of y z y comma z is equal to zero so what we had what we had thought from our previous step would be a function of uh, both y and z turns out to be a pure function of z and subsequently if we substitute this here then what we obtain is that the del del z of gz that is equal to 0. So what we were thinking to be a function of z turns out to be actually a constant. Okay, just a constant which is independent of x, y and z. All right, so ultimately what we are really obtaining is that del square phi this is our conclusion that the grad of the del square phi is equal to zero that means that del square phi is nothing but a constant now this innocent look looking equation is something very exciting especially if you happen to be of a uh, mathematically oriented mind Okay, if you happen to have a mathematical oriented mind, this will excite you because this is the form which is uh, which is the famous uh, Poisson's equation form. Okay, so the po uh, so let's so this is this is this is in the form of of Poisson equation. All right, and without going into much details of it, one can think that, uh, or one can easily understand that uh, the solution of this will consist of a homogeneous part and a particular integral. Okay, so uh, these are the things which I am basically concluding from our knowledge of first year engineering mathematics. Uh, so if you have a differential equation, uh, a non-homogeneous differential equation then the solution to it will be consisting of a, a homogeneous or a complement uh, a homogeneous part and a particular integral so that's exactly the same situation here so what you will do is first you will set the del square phi equal to zero that will give you the homogeneous solution and from the c constant you will get a particular integral okay now uh, it just so happens that this particular situation is is rather convenient okay uh, it is very convenient in because this del square phi equal to zero okay so from here if you consider the del square phi equal to zero okay and please note that del square phi equal to zero is just like a special case of the c okay so if c happens to be equal to zero then this is exactly what you will obtain and then this is this is really really interesting for a mathematician because this is the famous Laplace equation and solutions to this have been studied in great great detail so whenever people arrive in any particular framework with this kind of an equation they are very very happy okay because solutions to this in many many different situations uh, are known 
uh, this this equation uh, arises in different branches of physics uh, for example uh, electrostatics uh, fluid mechanics and certainly as we are now seeing in elasticity and many other places so so these things have been studied a lot and uh, and the and the poisson equation also the poisson's equation that has also been studied a lot so so whenever we have these kinds of second order differential forms with this particular form the with the laplacian of uh, sitting on the left hand side uh, this is this is nice now this would have been perfectly nice like, like this would have been a perfect situation a perfect kind of uh, would have been perfectly happy big if if it had not been okay so we are not perfectly happy because we are working we are working under this restriction okay we are strictly limited to irrotational displacement fields if somehow somehow we we didn't have to work under this restriction then the lamis potential would have been perfect okay because it is the lamis potential which is giving rise to this very convenient form okay and it is this the solutions to this particular thing is known okay and that uh, i mean that would have solved a lot of problems unfortunately this kind of a framework works only for this restrictive thing that we have this irrotational displacement phase okay so so you see take take an account of the overall situation as we are developing it we go back to the hemholtz displacement potential okay again we see that when we considered the body forces to be zero we ended up with this biharmonic equation and this biharmonic equation which is basically a biharmonic equations in the three components of the omega vector again the biharmonic equation has also been studied a lot solutions to this are known uh, to a large extent uh, but uh, there are certain restrictions uh, within this formulation also okay and the main of course main main restriction is that these things arise only when we set the body force to be equal to zero similarly here okay i must not forget to say that uh, i had said uh, a little while ago that uh, this this formulation would have been perfect the lamis strain put the the, lab, the lamis strain potential would have been perfect uh, had it not been for the case of the the restrictive uh, situation that we are working under irrotational flows there is the other restriction also that we are considering this this uh, this row b to be equal to zero so had it not been that then this this would have been perfect unfortunately these are there so which means that we have to go on to to other things to to i mean to get get more general solutions okay and we'll do that in the subsequent lectures but as we keep on developing our formulations of the various displacement potentials it is extremely important to note the the kind of motivations we are working through so every time you see somehow we are we want to arrive at these kinds of forms something that is that is conveniently solved for these biharmonic equations these are conveniently solved for these uh, this kind of a laplace equation or, a, or the at least the poisson equation that is conveniently solved for and the ultimate uh, displacement potential that we are going to study uh, we will see that it will be it will be very much motivated by by uh, by the desire to arrive at this kind of a poisson equation okay but uh, we will try to remove the restrictions from there all right so with on this note uh, i'll end this lecture and in the next one we are going to discuss something referred to as the uh, galerkin potential okay which is not the ultimate displacement potential we are going to going to use there will be something else after that also referred to as the popkovich neuver uh, displacement potential but that is for the future all right thank you very much